Okay, practicum students, uh, this is just a quick video to share with you how Micro Teaching 1 is going to work. I know um, as your first Micro Teaching, particularly online, this could be something that is a bit daunting for you, right? What do I do? How do I prepare? How's it going to go? So I thought I would review a couple of things with you just so you're super prepared. Okay, so the first thing we want to think about is what's the difference between micro teaching one and uh, the interactions chart? Well, if you have seen them as kind of identical, that would be pretty close to the truth. Um, the only difference there is that the teacher and student talk of the interactions chart can't really be replicated in the micro teaching because you don't know what the students are going to say to you. Uh, so in other words, the interactions chart is a methodology assessment which measures your ability to uh, plan to teach part of a lesson, uh, namely a lead-in, which is activating schema using various interactions that you have learned in our program thus far. Micro teaching one is the practical assessment of how well you can do that uh, in a classroom with students um, who are going to respond, you know, as students do. So it's the same topic, it's the same stage of the lesson, but that teacher-student talk is going to be different because you just can't predict it, all right? Um, and the next thing we should talk about is, because this is your interactions chart slash micro teaching one what do you turn in for the micro teaching part well you're going to want to turn in the rubric because um, as you're teaching your teacher is going to be assessing you and i need your uh, rubric to do that so i'll be highlighting things and and giving you feedback when you submit it to me i can I can do those things um, in an easier way than if you didn't submit it. Okay, the, the other thing you wanna turn in is your personal plan. Now remember, this is not graded, it's just a way to uh, for you to sort of sketch out what you're gonna do. Uh, it's more for yourself than it is for me. But remember the offer I gave you, and that is if you would like early feedback, am I on the right track? Is this kind of what I should be doing? Then submit this thing early and leave a comment and I will check it out and let you know if you're doing the right thing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how to prepare for this. Well, if I was gonna micro teach in the first micro teaching, the first thing I would do and it's online, the first thing I would do is go in here, find where it says MT1 and PO3 slides, and I would choose one of these slides, edit it with my name, and, and I would put my images up here that I plan to show my students in the micro-teaching tomorrow morning. Um, one of the things to keep in mind here is that Usually in micro teaching, you should be ready to go at nine o'clock on the day of the micro teaching. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why practicum is always the first class on a Wednesday. We want you to um, be ready to go at nine o'clock to get through your micro teaching successfully so you can relax for the rest of the day, so you can focus on the practicum lesson that follows or the reflection that follows uh, in addition to your methodology class, which usually, or actually on Wednesday, it would be uh, ICC or SLA class usually follows. Maybe ASD? <laughs> in any case, we don't want you to be distracted by this, so we make it the first class of the day. So make sure you put your stuff in these slides before we, we get started. and especially for activating schema, I suggest images, just some images. Remember, 
The goal is to guide students from general to specific. So show some images about the topic, get them personalized and get them asking each other questions. Uh, don't teach anything new. Okay, so you edit your slide with your images. Text, I would say avoid text. You don't want to model any language in this stage. You don't want to teach any language in this stage uh, necessarily. If they tell you something as they personalize, it's a good idea to type it up there on the slide just so they can see uh, their own language, what it looks like. Okay, so that's kind of uh, what you want to do before the micro teaching. During the micro teaching, when we're teaching online, I will record for you and uh, I will upload everyone's micro teaching recordings that day so that you can focus on reflecting as soon as possible when you have time. Uh, and remember, if you are a micro teacher, you're going to do self reflection. If you are a student, you're going to do a peer reflection how, about how well your peer uh, was teaching. And if you want to know more about the micro teaching reflection cycle, you can see my video about that, which is also on the YouTube channel. Something else that I would point out, remember when you come in as a micro teacher, when you come in as a micro teacher, you want to be in the mindset of a, an English teacher, a teacher of English who's teaching novice level learners. So what does that mean for you? That means keep your interactions, keep your language, keep whatever tasks you're doing super simple. That's why we've been talking about that uh, in the different classes, right? Um, one of the things you could think about is interactions. You might want to have a look at this document, which is called Proficiency and in Interactions. As you can see, we're going to be focused on novice mid and novice low. So MIC repeat is a good technique to use. Um, use lots of visuals. That's what novices are comfortable with. Uh, if they're novice mid, you might be able to encourage some complete sentences. Okay, but not much beyond that. Okay, you don't want them to summarize. You don't want to use present perfect with them. You don't want to ask them to do uh, guiding to complex questions, anything like that. Keep it super simple. Okay. Um, if you're a student during micro teaching, uh, something that you could remember, uh, something that you could keep in mind is your proficiency levels. Remember, you are either a novice low or a novice mid. So keep that in mind as you respond to your your teacher as you respond to your classmates you're either going to be doing a couple of words at a time mixing in a little korean super simple familiar topics remember all that don't give the expert advanced tessel student level answer when you are a student in these micro teaching activities uh, and one of the things I'll also mention is that as you are in there, whether you are teaching or you are a student, as you are doing this micro teaching, what you want to keep in mind also is that to be in the mindset of an English language teacher who's teaching novice level learners, please ignore your teacher. I'm not there. Okay. My webcam is off. I don't want you to focus on me. I don't want you to call on me. Um, do not mention the word methodology, practicum, tessel, sungmyung, all this kind of stuff. Connie, uh, James, Dave, uh, you know, who else we got? Matthew. Okay. Um, because the more you talk about that kind of thing, the more you're going to be in the mindset of a TESOL student, not an English language teacher, not a novice level learner. So forget about TESOL. And if you're a student, please don't say today I'm tired because I was doing methodology homework last night. I was doing uh, SLA homework last night. So 
don't mention those classes, don't mention your activities as a TESOL student. Just try to really focus on being an English language learner for this. Okay, um, and I think that's about it. Um, remember to, um, if you want a quick, quick uh, review of how you're going to do your peer and self-reflections, this is something that's been posted for a while, but remember this, if you're doing your micro-teaching in the first week, then you want to go to your assignment, you want to find self-reflection. You want to fill out these things as you watch your video. That's the video that I will post for you this time. You want to highlight which teaching basics you did, highlight which interactions you used, highlight which ways to prevention, ways to prevent learning you may have used, and submit. If you are a peer, why does that say Hansel? If you are a peer, you want to do the same thing with this peer reflection, okay? As you watch your peer's video, highlight all the things she did, highlight the classroom interactions and the ways to prevent learning, submit that on the day before you come in for the next practicum class. That way I can check it out and return it to you because when you reflect in groups using this document, when you reflect in pairs rather, uh, you want to share this document with your partner and you want to have it in your possession so turn it in before then to me okay well i think that pretty much does it for your micro teaching one good luck reach out to me if you need anything at all i'm always 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 glad to help and uh you can do it